Camper trailer and caravan servicing. Not a very exciting topic, I know, but I do believe it's one that is often sidelined by the maintenance on our tow vehicle. After all, it's just a few wheels being towed behind our vehicle, right? How much could there be to check over? Well, in this episode, I'm going to go over a comprehensive list that I've put together in relation to my annual service schedule. I'm gonna show you how I organize my servicing, what I look out for, and what to regularly service. These tips are not only going to keep your equipment in the best possible condition, but reduce the chance of a breakdown next time you hit the road, and of course, reduce the chance of an accident that could end in disaster. Now, of course, there is a diverse range of equipment these days in cabber trailers, hybrids, and caravan builds. So not everything will be applicable to your trailer. However, to get the best and most accurate information, check with the manufacturer of specifically made pieces on your trailer. Now, there's going to be a lot in today's episode. So if you're looking for a specific piece of information, check out the timeline below or the description in this episode. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. Today, I'm going to go over my trailer service schedule with my 2022 Lifestyle Recon R4T SE hybrid camper trailer. It measures up at 6.9 meters long, weighs 2.5 ton unladed and 3.2 ton loaded with all my gear with a family of four. I've just completed a lap around Australia and dragged this trailer about 50,000 kilometers around the country on some of the most remote and rugged terrains Australia has to offer. So it makes sense to start up the front with the coupling, so here we are. Here we have a Cruisemaster DO35 off-road articulating hitch, debatably one of the most popular hitches on the Australian market, and this is how I go about servicing it. Firstly, there's a very basic visual inspection, making sure all the bolts are present, there's no damage or obvious missing parts, no bends or cracks or fatigue marks to be concerned about. I move on to the primary bolt securing the hitch to the camper, checking they are in fact at the recommended 90 Newton meters of torque required. The sliding plate mechanism is what secures the hitch to the pin on the vehicle, so making sure this is clean and adding just a little lubrication keeps it in check. We are making sure it moves freely and we can clearly hear that audible click. Now I spin the hitch. I'm checking the polyurethane bushes are in good order. There's no play or excessive movement up and down, side to side or front to back. If there is, minor adjustments can be made, however the bushes may need replacing. There's a greasing point here, so using a general grease, we pump it until grease starts to appear from those bush ends. Checking the handbrake moves freely and adding a little lubricant if necessary. And finally, checking the chain's integrity, ensuring there are no broken links, they are the correct length and they have the appropriate rated shackles. Throughout this episode, I'm primarily going to be using the TAC2 adhesive lubricant. I find it works quite well and really sticks to the areas and pieces you're trying to lubricate. This being said, don't use too much of it all where it's not necessary, as sometimes this sort of stuff can attract dirt and dust off-road, and that would end up being counterproductive. Just as important as checking the coupling on the van is, of course, the pin that it attaches to on your vehicle. While we're on the road, we met a fellow traveler from Queensland who actually lost this pin due to the nut vibrating off and the trailer fell off at 100 kilometers an hour. The holiday was over before it even begun, along with that unexpected repair cost. And most importantly, we are checking the tension on that main nut. The DO35 also has a polyurethane bush at the base and a rubber O-ring, so make sure these are in good condition and Cruise Master recommend it be lubricated with a very light coating of grease. Now moving just a little further back on the drawbar, we need to service the jockey wheel, often a forgotten piece of equipment that we use every single time we unhitch. Here I have the ARC XO Extreme Black Jockey Wheel, and in addition to having a sliding height adjustment, we have the swivel mechanism too. We need to make sure that both the swivel and the height adjuster spring-loaded handles move freely and are lubricated. This model also has a greasing point, so adding a little fresh grease for good measure. The cap can be removed with these bolts, and we can also clean up and add some fresh grease into these bevel gears. The handle also folds up and out of the way for off-roading, but this is known to come loose over time, so tightening these bolts up keeps it in place. Moving on to the body of the camper. Now up front, on most trailers, we have gas bottles. In Australia, they need to be less than 10 years old to be refilled, so check the manufactured date and replace if it's past this point. We also want to check the safety valve on the newer LCC27 fittings, and they shouldn't release any gas until plumbed into appliance, even when they're full. Now, one thing I've recently added to my checklist as well is to just to check the tension of these little screws on top of the valve assembly. I lost one of these in Cape York, the handle came off, and it made it quite difficult to open the gas bottle. So, quick Phillips head screwdriver, making sure they're nice and tight. And of course, if you're prepping for a trip, make sure they're filled up before you go. 
Now moving down the body of the camper trailer, just like most caravans on the market, we have a hot water system here on the far side. On the recon here, we have a Truma Ultra Rapid, which is actually maintenance free, but on most caravans, they have a large tank hot water system with a sacrificial anode rod that needs replacing on a periodic basis. So make sure you know how to do that, make sure it's got plenty of material left on it, and perhaps even carry a spare as well. As we walk around the camper, we are checking the exterior condition, and that includes things like the hatches, the latches that keep those hatches closed, the seals, the hinges, the gas struts, any doors and windows, and the general condition of the body. On the main side, check the serviceability of the awning. Whether it be a barrel style or a side mounted style like ours, it's a good idea to extend it out, check the legs and make sure any of the plastic parts are undamaged and then return it back. If nothing else, it's good revision, particularly if you haven't been out for some time. Now up to the roof, where most of us have solar panels and air conditioning units mounted. We're conducting visual inspections, ensuring the panels are in good condition, and we can also give them a quick wipe down while we're up here as well. So this camper, like many on the market, is also a pop-top styled camper. This is going to add a few checks to our service schedule as well. This particular camper has a pair of electric actuating rods to lift and lower that roof assembly. I use a silicon spray and give the actuating rods a light coating and just ensure there's no damage or signs of rust and corrosion. This camper also has a number of these spring-loaded scissor frames around that roof assembly with multiple moving parts. So anything that hinges or slides here can be hit with some lubricant, not only keeping it smooth, but nice and quiet as well. Now of course with a pop top assembly we have some sort of latch to hold that roof securely. Here we just make sure that we have the correct tension on each corner of this camper. Now it's time to get down and onto the ground to service the underside. For the most part, we are visually checking bolts, water pipes, drainage pipes, and electrical cables and supports, ensuring that no wiring or cabling is hanging down and everything is connected and there's no signs of water leaks. They've also found it quite common for rocks and road debris, so we get caught up in some of these conduits where the plumbing and electrical cables run down. It doesn't cause any damage straight away, but with the constant vibration and movement of the trailer, it's bound to rub through. So it's a good idea just to go through and try and get as many of those stones out as possible. Now we move on to what is probably the hardest working component tree on any caravan, and that is of course the suspension. Now on this camera trailer, we are running the Cruise Master ATX, which is similar in design to many other types of suspension systems for off-road camper trailers and caravans. This one here though is an airbag system, so there are just a few extra tasks. Anyway, let's get along and start servicing these items. I start with the large high torque pivot bolts on the front of each of the suspension arms. Using a torque wrench here is the best way to confirm the correct specification. Next up, I'm checking the two front facing bolts on each of the shock guards. Now onto what is probably the single hardest working component, the shock absorber. Back to using a torque wrench to confirm that both the lower and upper mounts are tensioned properly. And while I'm at it, I take a couple of minutes to thoroughly check over the shock absorber, confirming there's no physical damage to the body, the remote reservoir, or the shaft. And also ensuring there's no evidence of shock leaks, particularly at the bottom of each unit. Back with the torque wrench to check the lower cable strap mounts, followed by the upper mounts. There's a single grease point on the leading pivot point on each arm. Using a general grease compound with lithium additives, we fill this up until grease is observed pushing out from the end bushes. Now, as we have an airbag style suspension system, we want to check that we have full and correct motion on each side by lowering and raising each side individually and simultaneously. At the same time, I am checking the limiting cable straps and not touching the airbag at any point during this movement. It's also a good idea to leave the bags full overnight or for a period of 24 hours to ensure there's no leaks. The suspension relies on a single compressor and this supplied air tank. The tank has a small drain valve underneath and with frequent use, we need to drain the tank to prevent the buildup of moisture in that system. So while we're down here, it's also a good time to service the arc stabilizer legs. Now on this camper, we've got one on each corner, so four in total. They work a little bit like the jockey wheel. They have a black plastic cap that can be removed and extra grease added in. And of course, you're just checking the pull handles and the swivel mechanisms and lubricating them if needed. So moving out to the outside of the axles, and another very important area for us to service on our vans regularly is of course the brakes. So let's get this wheel off and I'll show you what we can look for. 
Now removing that tire, we have access to our drum brake. Now the vast majority of trailers, campers, hybrids, and caravans on the market will be fitted with a regular set of drum brakes. If you have discs, there will be different servicing techniques for that. Now in terms of checking this out physically from the outside, we can just give this wheel a spin. We're just looking for a nice even rotation. We don't want any squeaking, squealing, or grinding noises coming from inside here. Now there will be a little bit of friction noise as you can hear there, and that's just the brake shoes just touching the outside surface of this drum. Now to get access to those shoes, check the depth and the condition of the pads. You do have to remove this front bearing here. So check out my wheel bearing video. We'll be going to replacing all of this and what it looks like inside. Now once that assembly is removed, we can see here our brake shoes, our magnet, our drum assembly, and all the associated hardware with that. Now it's always easier to inspect with a clean area. I don't recommend using compressed air because of the dangers with brake dust. However, if you do, just make sure you don't breathe it in. You can also use an alternative just being a generic brake cleaner. Now here, we just wanna be checking the depth of the brake pad material on these brake shoes. So we've got one at the front here and one at the back. In addition to checking the depth, we also wanna make sure there's no scores, gouges, or scrape marks through that material, indicating that rocks and debris have got into this assembly and rolled around on those brake pads. Further, we also wanna check the magnet system. Now these drum brakes work by pushing this magnet out and onto the inside of the drum assembly. This then grabs that drum assembly and pushes the brake shoes out forwards or backwards, depending on the direction of the vehicle's travel. We wanna make sure that these movements are smooth and uninterrupted, that both the backwards and forward motion works well, and of course the magnet moves well on its mount. Now lastly, of course, we wanna be checking the drum itself. Now here we have two surface areas that come in contact with the, dr the uh, drum brake components. The first being this faceplate at the back, which the magnet sticks onto and slides around on, and of course, therefore, pushing the brake pads out onto this outer rotor here. We just wanna make sure there's no scoring or warping and everything is clean and tidy. Now, before I chuck it back, I always get a bit of a brake cleaner, making sure not to get it into your uh, bearing assemblies. Give it a quick clean out. You're ready to stick back onto the trailer. The one thing we can check externally without removing this drum is to ensure that the handbrake is working. Now, on this tandem axle setup, the handbrake is only connected to this front axle via this cable here, which runs to the front drawbar. The handbrake's currently off, as we can see this cable's loose and the wheel spins freely. So let's go chuck the handbrake on and make sure we have some brake force applied here. Now with the handbrake applied, we can see now that the brake shoes are pushed out to that drum and we have no movement, so we're looking good there. Let's chuck that wheel back on. Now before we lower this tire back down to the ground and torque those wheel nuts up, there is one more thing we need to do in relation to the brakes, and that is of course adjust them given their wear. So the brake shoes are constantly pushing out when we brake, the brake shoes will start to wear down, and therefore they need adjustment to make sure they're always in the optimal position. To do that, we can access it from behind the drum. To adjust the brake shoes, all we have to do is remove this small black plastic cap from the rear of the drum brake. We can either use a specialized tool or just a screwdriver to lift and lower a small adjuster nut just on the inside of this plate. Cruise Master suggests that you should tighten the brakes up until the wheel binds up and then release it back eight to 10 clicks, ensuring that each wheel receives the same adjustment for even brake applications. While we're still in this area, the last thing we're going to be doing is checking the wheels, tires, and wheel bearings. Now I have done a full episode on how to check, when to check, and how to replace a full set of wheel bearings on your caravan or trailer. So check that out if you're interested in that one. But a quick way to check your wheel bearings is just by jacking up the tire, placing your hands at the 12 o'clock and six o'clock positions, and doing a push-pull motion. We're looking or listening out for any knocking noises from that lateral movement that could indicate either worn bearings or a minor adjustment is required. But here today, we're just going to be checking over our wheels and tires. Now the wheels themselves, we're looking for any obvious signs of damage, any dents, cracks, or fractures in the wheel itself. And of course, we're going to be doing up those wheel nuts to the torque specifications after we've checked our brakes. Now moving onto the tires, again, looking for any signs of damage, any sidewall tears, rips, or chunks missing from the rubber in any part of the tire. We can also look out for cracks, which can come down to age, not necessarily how many kilometers they've done. We're looking at the tread blocks themselves too. We wanna to make sure there's a nice even wear pattern. Any uneven wear can be a result of poor alignment, and if that's the case, you might want to look at getting some trained assistance to try and fix that up, unless you're comfortable with the system you're working with. Now I know that the tires on this camper are good because they were put on only a few days ago, so we're looking good down in this department. 
Now, while we're on the subject of tires, make sure to check your spare wheel. It's just as important as the wheels on the ground if you need it in case of a flat. And it's a very easily and often forgotten item on a service checklist. Now, keeping in mind that trailer tires are often mounted on the back of trailers just like this, fully exposed to all of the elements. So if it's been sitting out here for a few years without use, there could be a chance of some UV or heat damage to the top. So give it a once over, make sure there's no damage to the wheel or the tire itself, and it's still holding pressure. In addition to that, make sure these wheel nuts are done up firmly as well. We don't want this wheel falling off down the highway, but not too tight. We recently had an incident where another vehicle had a flat on one of our trips, and these bolts were done up so tight, we actually ended up snapping the head off one of them and almost couldn't get that spare wheel off just when we needed it. So make sure they come off, but make sure they're nice and firm as well. Of course, tire pressure is a vital part of tread wear, tire longevity, along with ride comfort, and of course, fuel consumption. So it's in your best interest to ensure they're running at optimal pressures. Now, manufacturers often recommend certain pressures. However, if you are unsure, I use this calculation here that gives you a good starting point to work from. Now I use the Morflate Quad Tire Inflation System to pump up the tires on my camper. This ensures that I've got equal pressures throughout the four wheels. If you haven't seen one of these units before, check out my video review up here. Not only is it very accurate and gives you that equalization amongst all the wheels, but it's also a lot quicker as well. Now all the exterior items on this camper are looking really good, so let's jump on inside and see what else we have to check. The first thing I wanna check is the fire extinguisher. All campers and caravans are required to have one, so make sure the one that you have is still present and serviceable. You wanna check the charge needle, making sure it's in the green and then give it a good shake. Sometimes these powdered extinguishers can sit for years on end with the powder settling on one side and significantly reducing their effectiveness when desperately required. I also get into the habit of checking the fire alarm. Now this particular one does not have a replaceable battery, but we can see here that the expiry date is not till 2032. Nevertheless, we'll reinstall it and give it a test anyway. The last check I wanna do is electrical. As you can see, the Lifestyle Recon has a fairly substantial electrical system. I wanna conduct a visual and physical inspection of this system to make sure there's no loose wiring or any obvious damage. Of course, I wanna make sure that the battery terminals are secure, the batteries themselves are tied down securely, and there's nothing loose or any exposed wiring that could cause a short. This trailer also has a 240 volt system, so I wanna ensure that both the external input RCD and the inverters RCT protection systems are working. The external RCD can be tested by plugging in a 240 volt cable, checking the charge rates and activating that RCD, ensuring the charging stops. The internal RCD can be checked by running any 240 volt appliance in the trailer, like the aircon, and activating the RCD, ensuring all 240 volt appliances switch off immediately. Now it's time to check the charging systems, ensuring that I have 240 volt charge, solar charge, and DC charge from the vehicle. We can see after cleaning those solar panels earlier, I'm bringing in 60 amps from solar, so we're looking good in that regards. It's now time to plug in the 240 volt input. Now keeping in mind, if you're relying or carrying a generator with you, this is a good chance to get the generator out and make sure it's compatible and working well with your trailer. Plugging it into the generator, we can hear that charger engage and we can see the amperage increase too. Finally, plugging in that DC charge from the vehicle and we get that additional 30 amps and we are looking good. I also check my electric water tank monitors and battery voltages are correct and of course the trailer's exterior driving lights. This includes the front clearance lights, side clearance lights, parking lights, brake lights, reverse lights and of course number plate lights. Well, everything is looking good. Everything seems to be operating as it should. No damage has been noted and all serviceable areas have been serviced and or replaced. One final thing left to do, and that's to take it for a quick test drive. Firstly, I'd like to conduct a crawling test on the breakaway system. Having someone slowly moving the vehicle forward and pulling that breakaway cable on a loose surface, we should see the trailer wheels apply the brakes. Now I head to a low traffic area and conduct a few brake applications, ensuring that my brake proportioning system is working correctly and I have the ability to dial up and dial down the trailer brake bias. It's also important to be able to override the brakes and activate the trailer brakes independently. And we can see that is working too. Well, there you go, that is a lot of information. And to be honest, a lot of information probably forgotten without a checklist. But this here today covers just about everything you visually need to check, test, service, grease, and or replace. And it's a good idea to do this at least once a year, even if the trailer's only getting minimal use. 
Not only will regular checks like this minimise the potential for disruption or stress on your next trip away, but also minimise the risk of injury from accident or even worse to you, your family and other road users. It also gives you the opportunity to familiarise yourself with your trailer, what tools you need, what spares you need to carry, and it'll be much easier to troubleshoot anything out on the road if you're familiar with the components and how they operate. I hope today's episode has covered some information that has been helpful, and I'm hoping it's gonna be a reference point that you can come back to in the future for your annual services. If we don't see you out in the tracks, I'll be sure to see you next time on Exploring Oz. Cheers.